Hello, this is Dr. David Green with R3 Stem Cell. The topic today is stem cell therapy for cartilage defects. Cartilage is the cushioning tissue at the end of our bones. It's in every joint. It's comprised of collagen and proteins, and it receives no blood supply. So the way it gets its nutrition is by way of diffusion, either from the joint fluid or from the bone on top of the cartilage. Uh, but it, it involves a very slow metabolism and growth, and it often does not provide enough nutrition to heal after injury. Here's an example of normal-looking articular cartilage. You can see here in the knee, it's called hyaline cartilage, and then this is the uh, thigh, bone, uh, thigh bone and then the shin bone. And there's very little friction when normal cartilage articulates together. In a cartilage defect, it usually occurs due to a trauma from an automobile or motorcycle accident, a slip and fall, a sports injury. Either this does not heal, or it could fill in with what's called fibrocartilage, which is not normal cartilage. It's not uh, durable enough. It usually lasts one to three years. And this often leads to premature arthritis and chronic pain. You can see here, uh, this instrument is showing um, a large cartilage defect with exposed bone. You can see this clearly here. You have, this is bone, and this is normal cartilage around it. This will not heal. Available treatments that are conventional include medications, oral or topical, physical therapy, acupuncture, bracing, TENS units, or injections with steroid or hyaluronic acid. None of these treatments actually heal the problem, but they can provide excellent pain relief. Here are examples of three surgeries. This is the most simple, which is a microfracture, where the surgeon will drill holes into the defect and it will fill in with the fibrocartilage, which is not normal cartilage and it's not very durable for very long. Another procedure is called an Oats procedure, which involves cartilage transfer from an area such as this, where there's not really any weight bearing. And these plugs get put into the defect, and that can be helpful when this heals in. The ACI is an autologous chondrocyte implantation where you take some cartilage from a non-weight bearing area, you ship it off to a lab um, that cultures it for a couple weeks or a couple months, and then another surgery is done to put those cartilage cells into the defect. Okay, These are surgeries. They do involve some risk and rehab. Um, this one involves two surgeries. So as a very, very last resort, a patient can undergo either a partial joint replacement or a full joint replacement. These are a last resort. These implants are not meant to last forever. They do usually have successful outcomes, but they are not risk-free. So the most cutting-edge treatments are what we're really talking about here is regenerative medicine therapies with stem cells. They do offer the potential for cartilage healing. They can help delay or even avoid the need for invasive surgeries and allow people to become active again. Can cartilage be healed? Um, first is, can it be healed safely? And a study in 2011 showed that bone marrow stem cell transplantation into the knee is a safe procedure and will be widely used around the world. A case study from 2008 in pain physicians showed that Bone marrow stem cell culture resulted in significant cartilage growth, decreased pain, and increased joint mobility. Another study in 2012 said that, concluded that patients affected by cartilage defects will benefit from a cell-based transplantation strategy. So we're going to look at the three most common regenerative medicine treatments. The first is PRP therapy, also known as platelet-rich plasma therapy. And a sports medicine journal in 2000. 13 stated that human trials mostly conducted in the form of injection into knees with osteoarthritis have shown promise in a number of investigations for achieving symptomatic relief of pain and improving function okay um, and then orthopedic journal in 2013 showed that prp therapies work well for low-grade cartilage degeneration and when other more traditional conservative approaches fail such as we talked about before here's how prp therapy works it's very simple. Blood is collected from a person's arm, just like a blood draw, 30 to 60 cc's. Then it's spun around very well, clockwise, whatever, um, in a centrifuge for 8 to 15 minutes. 
and that actually separates the platelets from the rest of the blood components into three sections. So this is the platelet poor plasma, this is the red blood cell area, and in the middle is um, the platelet rich plasma, and that's what actually gets drawn off and injected into the problematic uh, joint. Okay. So now we're talking about bone marrow derived stem cell therapy. This involves an outpatient procedure where the bone marrow is harvested from a person's, person's hip area called the iliac crest. Immediately it's processed uh, to produce concentrated stem cells, growth factors, platelets, and that gets injected into the problem area. A study out of stem cell research in 2012 showed that bone marrow stem cells appear to be ideally suited for therapeutic use in cartilage regeneration. Uh, a prior study in 2007 looked at this for five patients and showed that bone marrow stem cells may be an effective approach to pr promote the repair of articular cartilage defects. So a lot of promise and some great results so far in those smaller studies. Now amniotic stem cell, stem cell therapy has been intriguing and very successful so far. It involves the acquisition of amniotic fluid from consenting donors after a scheduled c-section. So normally the amniotic fluid is thrown away but it has a tremendous concentration of stem cells. The advantage is that embryonic cells, embryonic stem cells have a tendency to grow wildly and form tumors but the amniotic fluid stem cells are not embryonic so they don't form tumors but they're able to differentiate into cartilage cells, muscle cells, nerve cells. Um, there's no rejection. It, uh, it might seem counterintuitive, but amniotic stem cells actually are immunoprivileged. They don't cause any rejection by the body. They also have growth factors, hyaluronic acid, and anti-inflammatory factors. So it has a plethora of things to help heal um, cartilage damage or soft tissue damage with tendonitis, ligament injury. Uh, the tissue is pro the amniotic fluid is processed at an FDA regulated lab. There's no fetal sacrifice. Uh, amniotic fluid stem cells have the potential to grow into functioning cells of many types. And they even keep that ability after freezing and thawing. So the typical way that these are kept is cryogenically frozen and then just before they're going to be used, the tissue the uh, fluid is thawed out. In conclusion, regenerative stem cell therapy for cartilage defects is safe and it's cutting edge treatment with immense promise showing great results in numerous small studies. These are outpatient stem cell procedures that are readily available now with no ethical issues. R3 currently works with centers of excellence nationwide that offer these stem cell therapies for cartilage defects, arthritis, tendonitis, ligament injuries, and more. Visit us today at r3stemcell.com, and for more information, call us at 844-GET-STEM. I'm Dr. David Green with R3 Stem Cell. Thank you very much for joining us today.